Once upon a time, not so very long ago, computers came with cathode ray tube monitors. Due to the phosphors and display techniques used in CRTs, it was very common to see something called screen burn-in taking place if something was displayed on the screen for too long. This was permanent, and it sucked. So people like John Socha created the first screen savers to literally save their precious computer screens. At first, they simply blanked the screen after a period of inactivity, but eventually people started getting creative and made more elaborate screen savers. One of these was After Dark, developed and published by Berkeley systems in 1989 for the Apple Macintosh. Billing itself as the ultimate screensaver actually wasn't a stretch, and this was easily the most popular screensaver package I remember from back in the day. Though version 1.0 wasn't terribly popular, version 2.0 here really gained a foothold and took over the screensaver market for a time and is the version we'll be looking at here. It came on a single 3.5 inch floppy disk, so while there were over 30 screensavers included, referred to as modules, they weren't hard on your free disk space at all. You even get a surprisingly detailed manual covering installation methods, the more complex modules, and even an entire section on how to program and build your own using C and Pascal. And just in case you doubt how much of an impact After Dark had, take a look at this crap. Yeah, there was an entire book on the thing called The Art of After Dark, a bunch of add-on modules for popular franchises like Star Trek, Looney Tunes, and The Simpsons, and even a range of After Dark apparel and accessories featuring the most popular modules on t-shirts, mouse pads, friggin' neckties, and more. Screensavers were serious business, dude. Installing After Dark is incredibly simple, and as long as you have a Macintosh 512KE or better, it'll run. Just insert the floppy, copy its contents to your system folder or control panels folder on System 7 and higher, restart your system, and you're done. You can then open the After Dark control panel and control the panel of controls, after dark, or during the daytime or any other time, at your leisure. There are some options to set overall, like how long it'll take for it to start and whether or not you want a password to end the screensaver, but most of the options are specific to each screensaver module. So, let's just go ahead and take a look at each of them, starting with none other than Starry Night, one of the original After Dark 1.0 screensavers. This and all the other original modules are pretty basic, but still strangely engaging. There were no bitmapped graphics of any kind, just line and pixel art, done in such a way that somehow proved amusing. Like this, where you have a primitive cityscape and night sky with flickering stars and lights and the occasional shooting star. Next, we have Bouncing Ball, which is a ball that bounces and makes bouncing sounds. You can change the speed and the size of the ball, but whatever you do, it's still just a ball, simulating the use of potential, gravitational potential, and kinetic energy. Next, there's Can of Worms, which contrary to the name, contains exactly zero cans, but does contain up to 20 worms. They just kind of wander around the screen, eating up your pixels, because that is their nature. Next is Clock, which you might think is a screensaver featuring poultry crossed with a handgun, but no, it is a clock. Several kinds of clocks, even. But they all simply tell your current system time, which is cool if you need to be somewhere, but then if you did, why are you watching this screensaver? Next is Doodles, which simulates random doodles. Cool. Then we've got Down the Drain, which shows your desktop getting flushed down the drain, and can actually be seen as a metaphor for the monetary depreciation of said desktop computer just months after you bought it in the 90s. Next is Fade Away, which fades the screen to black. Or not quite black, unless you do want it all black, and in that case, just feel free to make that choice. Next up, there's Fish, with an exclamation point showing just how exciting fish can be if you're an overly excitable person. Yep. Lots of fish here, and you can even add in your own fish if you import your own graphics. And now we have probably the single most famous module of them all, Flying Toasters. You got toasters with little wings on them that fly around being all awesome and hopelessly endearing. You've even got Flying Toast, which you can adjust the doneness of in the options, and that's totally pointless, but totally awesome. Apparently, the idea for this came to After Dark co-creator Jack Eastman one late night while trying to come up with more artistic modules for After Dark 2.0, and in a sleep-deprived state, he just happened to catch a glimpse of his toaster in the kitchen and somehow imagined wings on it. The rest is history. Hard Rain is the next module, and this is another early one of theirs that is very simple. You've got lines that resemble raindrops that cover your screen with darkness, and that's about it. Next is Lissajou, which simulates curves of the same name, also known as Bowditch Curves. Balls, yeah, mathematical graphs of a system of parametric equations that describe complex harmonic motion. 
Then you've got Logo, which floats a logo around the screen in as mundanely a way as possible. Nice if you're made of boring and or work for a company with no imagination. Messages is a similar module which lets you customize messages that either scroll across or float around the screen. Then you've got Multi-Module, and this one allows you to select multiple modules to display at the same time. Awesome if you have trouble loving just one screensaver at a time. Be careful though, the others still get jealous before long. And then there's Nightlines, which has absolutely nothing to do with ABC's late night news show and everything to do with colorful line patterns on a black background. Then you've got the PixPlayer animation module, and this actually displays animation files made with programs like MacroMind Director, Studio One, and Super 3D. I'm sure that's useful to someone. Picture Frame is similar, except this displays stationary picked format image files on your screen instead of awesome animations. And Puzzle is a far more interesting module that turns your entire screen into a sliding puzzle and one that never seems to solve itself, resulting in much aggravation if you're one that enjoys solving things instead of just watching them go to crap before your very eyes. Then you've got Rainstorm, which mimics rain, and a storm resulting in a virtual rainstorm. <laughs> oh, adjust the strength, the amount of lightning, and even how far away it is, which affects when thunder sound effects play. Randomizer is a bit like multi-module, except you choose random screensavers to play in full screen instead of all on screen at once. Rose is a module creating patterns of a vaguely rose-like nature using neon-colored pixels, and it's nice and somehow mesmerizing. Satori uses a technique the author calls color animation. As you might expect, it generates and animates a bunch of colors, 256 of them to be exact, and it looks trippy and awesome and I like it. Shapes makes a bunch of shapes. Neat. Slideshow is the same as Picture Frame, except that you can select multiple pictures that display sequentially. Why these options weren't rolled into Picture Frame or vice versa, I have no idea. Then there's the Spheres module, which gives you blue balls. And Spotlight, which does exactly this, right here, at different sizes and speeds. Starry Skyline is an extension of Starry Night, allowing you to customize the appearance of the buildings this time. String Theory extends particle physics by replacing point particles by extended objects referred to as strings. It's also yet another After Dark module that generates overly energetic, trippy, colorful lines for your monitor. Next is Supernova, which produces loud, obnoxious, colored explosions, and I have no idea who could possibly think this is anything but headache-inducing. Vertigo is another module that seems to be made for the exclusive purpose of getting off on 256 color graphics and doesn't really do much else. And finally, Warp is the classic Starfield simulator in After Dark form, arguably made the most famous with the version included with Windows 3.1. It's not the exact same piece of software, but it does the same thing. And that's it for Berkeley Systems After Dark. Is it awesome? Balls, yeah, it's awesome. Would you get it nowadays? Not really, no, because really, who uses screensavers anymore? And if you do, there's probably better alternatives. But there's just something that cannot be beat about these originals if you're somebody that grew up with them or just remember them from back in the day. They were colorful, they were creative, they were just awesome. And there were so many more that I didn't even touch on that came in the later versions, so yeah. I hope you enjoy this look back at the After Dark Screensaver Package version 2.0. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a sudden craving for toast that I must fulfill.